Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. Today, we're gonna to be talking about mechanically drilled blind and buried vias. What are the design rules? How are they fabricated? And how can you use them successfully in a PCB layout? Now, most of the time when blind and buried vias come up, it is in the context of micro vias in HDI boards. And I will admit I am guilty of doing that quite often on the channel. But what about blind and buried vias that are mechanically drilled in a standard stack drill and plate process? I'm gonna show you how these are fabricated, how they impact your design rules, and how they impact some of the clearances that you need to enforce in the design due to multiple rounds of plating. Let's go ahead and hop into Altium you can follow along and let's get started. In this video, we're talking about mechanically drilled blind and buried vias. And of course, they come with their own design rules related to the manufacturing process. So what I want to do first in this video is run over what is the manufacturing process for blind and buried vias that are mechanically drilled and put through a standard stack drill and plate process. Then we'll jump into Altium. We can see an example application of these design rules and how that's going to impact the rest of the design rules in your PCB layout. So let's just consider for a moment that we have a slab of dielectric material material. And normally in a PCB, there's already some copper foil on here. And in order to form a via in this slab of material, of course, we drill it. And then we have a whole wall that's left over. That whole wall then gets plated in a plating process. Some of that plating process then, of course, applies an additional layer of copper up here on this top and on this bottom layer. And you can see here, we now have our plated via. Now, if this were going to be, for example, a blind via, we would then put another sheet of dielectric material on top of it. And that sheet of dielectric material then also has its own copper. When we want to put another via through these two stacks, we can do that. We would then just want to plate somewhere else in this design. So now what we've done is we've drilled another hole going through this entire stack up, and then we apply another plating process. And this plating process then, of course, puts copper on both of these layers and creates our whole wall. And this is our next via. So this is basically the process for fabricating blind and buried vias using mechanical drilling and then stacking and plating in a PCB. When we have mechanically drilled blind and buried vias, we can keep extending this pattern as much as we want until we get to our desired number of blind and buried vias. So in this example, if we're starting with buried vias, this would be like having our bottom layer and our blind vias are starting on the bottom layer. And then we just keep building up until we add more and more and more layers. And that gives us more and more of these blind vias as we keep plating up the stack up. Each time we apply this plating process to a new via, we're adding more plating on this exposed layer. So that's one thing you have to consider. And I'll go over how you can predict what the final weight is of this copper that's on this bottom layer once we look at the example in Altium. Now, each of these sections that gets drilled and plated and then stacked onto another section is called a sublamination. So here we have sublam number one. And then here we have another sublamination. We'll call it sublam number two. So these two sublaminations form part of our overall PCB stackup. Now, what if we had multiples of these sections? For example, we had one section that starts with these two blind vias, and then we had an identical section, but we want to use that identical section as buried vias. Well, we can do that. We can actually take a layer of prepreg and remember, prepreg is like the glue inside of a PCB stackup. And using this prepreg, we can then bond this pair of laminations to another pair of laminations. So this allows us to build up all of these laminations into a stack. And that's how we get a full PCB stackup with these blind and buried vias. Now, of course, when I placed this second via here in this first stack, I didn't have to just place this layer right here next to this layer so that we have a three layer sublam. We could actually have another set of dielectric right here, which also has its own set of copper. So this could really be four copper layers that are put into a stack of sublaminations. 
So you can see the pattern here. You can start to then take a via, add another via through these sub lambs, and then plate these different stacks together using a prepreg to then build a full stack up. Once you've created the entire stack up, what's the final drilling and plating process? Well, it's the final drill and plate for your plated through holes for all your through hole vias. So that's gonna be the final plating step that forms your through hole vias and then your final plating that forms your surface layers. Now here in this example, of course, we've used a prepreg to bond this set of sublaminations onto some other part of the stack up. And the placement of these prepregs is then going to drive whether these other dielectric sections are core or prepreg. And so that's very important when building stack ups in general, but of course it's even more important here in this case because you have to specifically place these prepreg layers in order to bond all of these stacks together. So if this is a prepreg right here, then for example, this would have to be a core. For example, this could then be a prepreg because we have to bond core and prepreg together. And then you can come up with the pattern here. You can see then that this would also have to be a prepreg and then since this via only passes one layer, this could then be a core. And so you can then see from the placement of prepregs, you can then predict what these other layers should be, either prepreg or core. Now, since we're dealing with mechanically drilled vias, normally what we also have to consider is the aspect ratio of the sections that we're drilling through. So when you are determining the diameter of these mechanically drilled vias, of course, it needs to be mechanically drillable, which generally means greater than six mil diameter, but also you need to make sure that the distance that you're drilling falls within the aspect ratio limit enforced by your manufacturer. So for example, if you're using a six mil drill, the aspect ratio limit may be as small as six to one at the extreme end, and it could be closer to, for example, eight to one, again, depending on the fabrication house that you're using. If you're using, let's say an eight mil or maybe a 10 mil drill, then you're gonna get closer to maybe more like 10 to one allowed aspect ratio. So this is important because it's going to limit the drill sizes that you can use as you place these blind and buried vias in the stack up. So for small layer spans, this really doesn't matter. For example, this might be a six mil drill. And then for example, this core might be only a six mil core. And if you have a six mil core with a six mil drill, your aspect ratio is just one to one. Pretty simple. But for much larger spans throughout this stack up, you're going to have larger aspect ratios. So you just need to check that you're gonna be within the aspect ratio limits enforced by your manufacturer. So far, we've discussed several design rules. Of course, we've discussed what are the placements of core and prepregs. We've discussed how does this impact the final copper weight, which we'll discuss a little bit more once we get into the demo in Altium. And then we've discussed aspect ratios. But there's one other thing that's very important, which is where we can place different via spans. Now you'll notice here that we have via spans that are starting on the same layer, even though of course they end on different layers. Now this is acceptable. We can have via spans that start on the same layer and end on different layers. But what we can't have is a via span that starts on one layer and a different via span that ends on that same layer. So for example, we couldn't have a via span starting here and going up because it ends on the same layer that a different via span starts. So this one is a no-go. The other thing that we can't do is have via spans that are crossing each other. So for example, I wouldn't be able to have a via span that starts up here and then ends down here because it would cross over the ending point for this via span. And then finally, we are allowed to have nested via spans. And if you think about how the stack and drill and plate process works, the nested via spans make perfect sense. Nested via spans would basically be like a via span that's contained within a larger via span. So for example, let's just imagine for a moment that we don't have this via span right here, and we didn't have this drill right here through this bottom core layer. What we could do is we could have a via span going between these two layers. So we have a via span right here, and we have another via span that starts above it and ends below it. So this is also allowed. So let's take a look at an example inside Altium that uses all of these different via spans that we discussed, and we'll see what else we can learn.
So now to demonstrate the application of these design rules in a PCB layout, I have here a blank PCB doc file inside Altium and I created a default or preset stack up as a 16 layer stack. So what I wanna do now is go over some of the via types that you can set and that will be allowed under the design rules which you have to enforce based on the manufacturing process. And then what we'll do is we'll count up the number of lamination steps that are needed and then we can predict what the final copper thickness is going to be in various layers. So here, of course, we start with just a standard through hole via and I can start adding in more vias as you can see here. So first thing I've done is I've added in two vias. Now here we have two vias that are starting on the same layer and these two blind vias are ending on different layers. So this would be an allowed via transition. And here for this blind via going from one to three, we could, for example, change this to let's say one to six. Now we could then add in a buried via if we wanted and we could go from let's say three to five. The three to five and the one to two and the one to six transition would be allowed. And there are some reasons for that. First of all, the five to three transition is buried in between this one to six transition. So it's gonna get plated and then laminated to the one to two via. And then what they'll do is they will then place this dielectric layer and copper on the bottom side of this three to five via, and then they'll drill and plate the one to six via. So these three would be allowed. What wouldn't be allowed is to start the three to five via on layer two. So we couldn't have a two to five via because these would be starting and ending on the same layer. So this would not be allowed. But of course we could do a three to five as you see here. Now of course we can have other via spans which don't cross over or are not coincident with any of these other via spans. So you can see here we could have for example a 7 to 11 via. So because these two vias are separated by a dielectric we're allowed to place these in the PCB stack up and they can go through the standard stack, drill, and plate process. Now, one thing that's quite important here is to identify the sublaminations in the design and place prepregs between the different sublaminations because remember, the prepreg in a PCB stack up is like the glue and we have to use that glue to glue these different sublaminations together in order to form the stack up. So here you can see right here, we have a core layer. We would actually want to change this to a prepreg layer. Now, if we wanted to, we could, of course, make this a core layer, and that would require making this one a prepreg layer. At the interface between layer six and layer seven, here we're gonna be bonding two different sublaminations together. So we have the one to six sublamination being bonded to this seven to 11 sublamination. And so for that, we would then also need to have a prepreg right here. Now here, we could have a core layer between five and six because of course, all we're doing is bonding another layer onto this prepreg. So we could have a core. I think depending on the order in which they place these layers, you may actually need to have this as a prepreg. So that's something you'll need to validate with your fabrication house as usual. Now here we've mostly been looking from the top side, but of course we can replicate this all over to the bottom side. And there's one really useful feature here that you can use inside the layer stack manager to automatically replicate this, which is the mirror checkbox. So you can see right here, we have a mirror option. If I click here, the mirror option, you can see it automatically duplicates these vias across the top half of the stack up. And then we have them placed on each side so that everything is symmetric. Now you can see here that we have one via, once we mirror this, that is not allowed, which is this seven to 11 via transition. We would have to change this to a seven to 10 via transition in order to avoid violating the design rules for these blind and buried vias. This via being a seven to 10 via also ensures that we have symmetry through the top half and the bottom half of the stack up. Now I've mentioned symmetry a couple of times already. And so of course it's worth asking, why do we want to ensure that we have a symmetric stack up when we're creating these sublaminations? Well, the reason is that we want to prevent warpage when all of the layers and all of the sublaminations are pressed into the final PCB stack up. When you have asymmetric copper at various places in the stack up, and especially when you have asymmetric copper near the surfaces, that copper can pull very strongly on the dielectric materials during the cooling process after fabricating the stack up, and that can cause the PCB to warp. 
Once a PCB warps too much, of course it is not fixable. It will have to be scrapped and be remade. Now, last point, how can we predict the final amount of copper in this example? Let's take a look at each of these different layers and figure out how many times they have to be plated in order to form the final stack up. So let's suppose that we start with all of our copper layers having one half ounce of copper. So if we start with a half ounce of copper, each of these sublaminations is going to go through a plating step after drilling in order to form the various blind and buried vias. So let's take a look at, for example, the seven to 10 buried via. That one is going to start with half ounce copper on all layers. But after the plating process, let's suppose we plate it up with another half ounce of copper in order to form the via wall and the via pad on the top and bottom side of the sublamination. That means layer seven and layer 10 are each going to have one ounce of copper, not the half ounce of copper that we started with. But eight and nine are still going to have that half ounce of copper because they're not getting plated. Only layers seven and 10 are getting plated. So that's very important because on these outer layers, you can see that we have multiple rounds of plating that are going to happen. Let's look at layer one, for example. Here in layer one, we're going to then drill the blind via from one to two, and we're gonna plate it. So we start with half ounce, and then it becomes one ounce. Then we drill and plate the one to six blind via. Now the outer layer becomes one and one half ounces. Then the last fabrication step is we drill and plate the through hole via. And the through hole via is going to add yet another half ounce. So at the end of this fabrication process, the outer layer copper on both sides of this board is going to end with two ounces of copper. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Of course, we have some great resources linked in the video description, so make sure to check out those resources. We also have a blog article on the Altium website that goes over all of the design rules that I've discussed in this video. As always, leave your comments and questions in the comment section, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.